morning guys. It's uh, New Year's Eve. Um, Monday. Yeah, Monday morning. Um, we're going to work on this tractor here today. So I have a pulley and a guard that has to go on this side and a keyway. I just, uh, is that keyway? I just set the keyway in there. Come on. I just set the keyway in there, but I want to press it in with a seat clamp to make sure it's down all the way. And then I'll put that pulley on, there's a nut, uh, the guard, and then the pulley on this side. So then uh, that this side will be good. i got to put the belt on at the same time. That belt, um, you want to put the pulley on actually before the guard. Well, not, a, not exactly before it. I guess you can put it on before it. I'll check it and see. But I think that that guard is so tight to the belt, so close to the pulley, that you can't get the belt on after you put the guard on. So we'll check and see which is the best way here, and I'll get back to you. Okay, guys, so the key went in good. Nice fit. And um, the pulley went on nice. Didn't have to do a whole lot of hammering. And if you remember, there was a spacer back there. So the pulley is against the spacer in there. So that's what we want. So we're looking good here yet. Um, no problems with turning anything. We're going to keep track of that as we go, not that something's bound up. Now i got to take one bolt out of the bottom of the case there in order to put this cover on here. So I'm going to do that and then I'll get back to you. I need to get this belt on here as well. You can see how tight this is here. Just trying to get that belt on is a little bit of a bugger there. Although this should move when I... See the, well, i got to put the... i got to hook up that uh, clutch pedal there so I can get that belt to move or that pulley to move. So I'll get that and then get back to you. Okay guys, so I um, I put the pedal on that, or I mean the over in here, I put this bracket on that, this rod I should say, that, that um, it also adjusts and works the clutch pedal and it'll push this pulley down. When I push on the clutch, you can see it going down there. But right now, <coughs> what I want to do is get this bracket around this where the uh, belt goes. Now I'm going to have to put the belt on before I actually bolt it down, but um, man oh man, this thing is made in such a way that the only way you can get it on is to put it on on the bottom and then roll it around and then you know bolt it onto the frame like that. But I still got to get the belt on before I get that on. It's a very tight fit. Very close. So I'm going to put the belt on there now, and then I'll bolt that bracket on. Then I'll put the nut on the end of this shaft, and then I should be uh, in good shape with that. Okay, well, I think you can see how that bracket goes on here. Bolts on with one bolt, and then, like I say, it's really close up here to the pulley, so you can't really get the belt in there. So I put the I push down on the pedal. And then, um, you know, that gave me slack to get the belt on. But while I was looking at that, you see how these cooling fan here is messed up. Looks like they're broken off for some reason. I don't know how that would get broke. But I also noticed, like, these rods aren't quite what they ought to be. I'm going to have to uh, go over this thing at a later date. Right now, it's I just can't. I don't have time. But, um... I'm going to have to go over this thing later to make sure all this stuff is working right. I guess I can probably buy another cooling fan there. I just don't want, you know, half the blades are broken off for some reason. And that will be throwing this thing off center, making the bearing wear. So we don't want that. Alright, so put the nut on here. I'll tighten this with the air gun so it gets tight without putting a lot of torque on it. There we go. And uh, then we're going to put this emergency brake here. It's just, it's like a cam here. It goes through that. And when you pull up on this, or I think it goes this way, yeah. When you pull up on this, it, it like, you know, uh, sets the brake somehow back there. I have to actually check on how it's doing it because it doesn't really stop me that well. But I'm just going to put it on here then. And then I'll, again, I'll have to go over all these different things trying to adjust stuff and see what needs adjusting and what doesn't.
Okay guys, so the belt, the cover, got the nut tightened up in there, put the emergency brake handle on, and also uh, hooked up this uh, hydrostatic shifter from forward to reverse. So the only thing on the top here to hook up is these two lines, I'll do that from the other side. So, it looks like we ought to be alright there, I think everything is the way it should be. Uh, we'll soon find out once we get it going. Okay guys, so in order to get the stuff that's on this shaft, I have to take the tire off. Um, now, the reason I didn't leave the tire off is, first of all, this whole mechanism here with the two tires and all is so heavy I couldn't really handle that. So I put the tires on so, so I could move this thing forward and backwards to be able to hook the tractor together. So now I have to take them off so that I can uh, get those pulleys back on there. So I'm going to do that now. Okay guys, so what I'm going to hook up now is I'm going to hook these two lines up to this pump. And um, I want to, when, you when you're working with compression fittings, you just want to make sure that they're clean and inside the pipe that you're putting on so that nothing, you know, stops the seal because it is like metal to metal. Uh, so anyway, that's my next step. Okay guys, so just got back from eating lunch and uh, I decided to print this thing out because I wasn't positive of where all what goes. <coughs> um, I've got, let's see here, I've got this, this, that taken care of. The next thing is this little bit of clutchy thing and this rod that goes from the engagement handle for the uh, PTO. So got to take a look at that. If I remember, that was a little tough getting that apart inside there. I better check that now before I go too far. So, um, this rod here is, um, where's that at? Right here, this is what you're looking at, this part with the rod. That just goes in a hole here and comes out the opposite side. I put a washer and a cotter key on it. I don't even know what this is for. It's, uh, probably for some kind of attachment, the lawnmower, or whatever. I don't really care about the lawnmower on this because I have a mower on my other tractor. I just do not want to have to change from blades to mowers every year. I'm sick of it. I thought I would have uh, somebody to do that for me, but it didn't work out. So um, I'm going to have, I, I just can't do it every year. It gets to be too much. So I'm gonna, that's why I don't care about anything other than the uh, plow blade on this thing at this point and using it to do driveway stone. So anyway, we're looking pretty good here so far. Um, I'm going to check out this lever here that goes from the um, uh, PTO and then I'll get back to you. Okay guys, I think you can see that block move in there. I put that bolt with the rod. The rod is um, let me get something to point with. The rod is on this side of that block. See this block here? It's on this side with a bolt. They tell you to put Loctite on it because it's just, you don't want the bolt really tight. It has to be loose and at the same time, you know, all the way in. And then uh, that's the PTO control lever. Not much movement there. There's also a switch I notice on this thing that, um, shuts the motor down when when this goes into a certain position. I'm not sure why yet. I'm going to have to check that out. Okay, so the next thing now is this little drive shaft here so I can get this yoke on that goes in here. So I'm going to loosen these bolts up here and see if I can't get this shaft to move a little bit out of my way because I can't move it over far enough to get the yoke on it. Okay guys, so here's what took place here. I loosened up these two nuts on both sides of this uh, little drive shaft here and it gave me enough play to be able to move this and get the yoke on. So I have the yoke on there now and it's over top of a keyway or a key rather and um, now that that's tight, now you can tighten this Allen screw here. Now the thing is, 
what's weird about this, and you know, we I was teasing one of the guys was teasing me about having any leftover parts. I don't understand something here. Now you can see that the, how these go together here. Okay, there's a flange on both sides, but for some reason there was a bolt on each side of this little wafer here. It looks like a piece of fiberglass, and these bolts look like this. But when I look on the schematic, not the schematic that's there, but I have another one on the computer, there's, it only shows two bolts. So I don't know why somebody would put that bolt up there or in there like that. That doesn't make any sense. So I'm not putting them in. So I am going to have leftover parts, I guess. So that's where I'm at so far. I want to make sure those, those are tight, the Allen screws tight, and then I'm going to put this clutch together over here onto this rod that you see here. Okay guys, so this, the stuff that goes on here, they're calling the PTO control group, whatever, but, so we have a spring here, and two, wa two light washers or keepers, um, or retainers, uh, something similar to what would be on the top of a, a valve on a car motor. But anyway, um, that's what goes on there, but we got to put this ring on first because the ring actually sits inside of this groove here once it's on the shaft and keeps this spring from riding against the frame when the shaft turns. So I need to get this spring keeper on there quick. So I'll be you back. Okay guys, so here's something a little bit annoying. Um, I put this PTO thing in here, but the rod to engage it goes into this hole right here, and I cannot get that in there. The uh, PTO thing is all the way forward, so what I'm going to have to do now is take the PTO um, where the lever goes inside there, and you saw that the one, the bolt that I put the uh, Loctite on, I'm going to have to take that back out so that I can get this in first and then put that in. <clears throat> so, I thought I could get everything done underneath there and be finished, but apparently not. So I have to take that apart to get this back on. But I'll finish this pulley that I'm on here. I don't really need this on this tractor for my own sake. But I'm putting it back on because I don't want to lose any parts to this thing. And even if I put them in a box somewhere or something, I may not ever find them. Or someone else that, you know, takes over my junk may not find them for me or whatever. So I'm going to um, make sure all the parts are on there. I'll just put these pulley and stuff on here. This is like a brake uh, drum sort of. It engages by pulling this against or by releasing this when it's when it's when it's released it's in but when you when it comes out what it does is it rides against like a, a wheel or a pulley that has a brake lining on the inside of it uh -oh. let me get that and I'll show it to you yeah, it's right here looks like it's all it, all it does is it breaks this and then engages this pulley on here. So what you got there is this is like asbestos or something inside here. You can see it's worn pretty good. On this side there's some. Doesn't look like there's any there. Then there's some again. So I would probably replace that if I was using this PTO. <coughs> but I'm not. So I'm not going to worry about it. And I don't think I'm going to be getting anything for the back of this because I don't need a rototiller or anything. All I really need is something to uh, rake with. Uh, that's why I'm building that, uh, I forget what you call that, what the guys were calling that thing, but with the little rake teeth on it. But anyway, i got to put the keyway in here and then slip that other piece on and put the nut on here. And then this this will be done, this, this little assembly here. Okay, so, so far we're doing pretty good. It's getting late already. I'm at, it's after lunchtime by, I don't know, it's almost 2.30, so I did, it's taken a little longer than I thought. But anyway, I'm going to have to take that rod, this rod, apart on the opposite end to be able to get it in here, which stinks, but it is what it is. Okay, guys, so the one thing I almost missed here 
is another one of these spring clips. You actually have, and I have a C-clamp on here to compress this. You compress this because of the spring and the C-clamp goes in there, rides in this groove and holds this thing over there so that the, the uh, spring can put tension on this. So I've got to put this clip in there yet, then the, the uh, woodruff key, and then I can put that pulley on, or not the pulley, but that brake drum on top of that thing. So if you ever, like I'm saying, uh, to put these on the D clip or the woodruff, the wood, to put the woodruff key into the groove, what I do is take it there and use a pair of vice grips, hold it, hold it in there, and then squeeze it down in with the vice grips. Now you want to be careful you don't, you know, goof up the shaft, but uh, if you're careful with it, it seems to work pretty easily. This key was in there really hard when I went to get it out the first time. This is a new key though. Alright, so, and, and if you do use that vice grips, and if you feel any rough edges on there, you can take a real small jeweler's file and file the edges off on that. I'm probably going to do that now quick anyway. Okay guys, I don't know if you can see this, but I'll show you one of my mistakes. Uh, if you look on the edge of this shaft, I had to take my grinder and grind this off. When I was bumping on something trying to get this shaft out of here, I hit the edge of these bolts, or these threads, and I goofed them up pretty badly. So they were, you know, to, they were at the point where I couldn't get the, the nuts started. I mean, they were really bad. So you can see I got the nuts started there, and it'll go on. But sometimes, you know, when you mess stuff like that up, like with a grinder, which is nice, you could just cut the threads out. And that's all I did. I just touched the top of that with the grinder to get that more, uh, threads out of there so that I ha had a way of getting back onto that. So, um you know, it happens, but at least there's a way to fix it. I'll tell you one thing, guys. Having those studs in there makes putting this tire on like a hundred times easier. You can see I'm off the ground a little bit. I mean, this tire, I don't know, probably weighs about 40 pounds or better. But trying to put it on with a bolt going through that aluminum and into the threads would have been almost impossible, you know, for one person. So... Now, with having the studs there, you just put the tire on the studs and you're pretty much done. So I'm going to tighten them up yet, and then I'm going to crawl back under there and take that rod off I was talking about for the PTO, and then I'll redo that thing. And then i um, got to put the wire in for the seat and the cover for the fan over there for that this fan in here, and then I should be ready to start her up.
I'm gonna have to jump that seat switch so I can see what's going on. There was a lever underneath the seat that disengages the transmission so you can uh, tow the tractor. And I think that's what was wrong with it. I'll try it here and see. This front and back shift isn't giving me full forward power, but I'm not getting no grinded or nothing. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm freaking as dirty as can be. So for right now, I've had it. I'm going to go take a little rest, and then I'll come back and clean up the garage. Hopefully, Bullseye won't eat my ratchets. So guys, um, those of you that have been hanging along and tagging along with me and giving me some good encouragement, I thank you very much. Um, looks like we got another successful venture <laughs> and we got a whole load more to do so thanks guys we get the north central PA we've got nothing but rain turning to ice when it hits so kind of crappy day hey guys the last thing I want to add to this video is that Sally and I wish you a happy, happy new happy year. Happy new year. So happy new year people. And thanks a lot for watching my videos. You'd have no idea what it means to us. Thank you. Have a good, healthy, happy, prosperous new year. And then some. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>